Well, hello ladies and gentlemen, and a welcome to a very long night Saturday and a very, very early morning Sunday for me because um, obviously as you can see, I look really beautiful. I don't look like a mess at all. I mean, look at me, I got like nice stylish hair, you know? Looks like I haven't taken a shower in a week. See, don't I look good? Don't answer that, please. Thank you. Actually, I just, um, I was filming till 4 a.m. this morning. My last scene of Rahu movie, which is going to be coming out this Friday around 7.30 a.m. on my channel, this channel, Kara's channel, for all, to view, for all of you to view. It's just something, uh, kind of like a unique approach I'm taking in showing people the way to understand the, the basics of and a little bit of an advance of a certain planet. So I'm like, you know what? Since Rahu is, you know, really um, transiting in the most dynamic sign of Leo right now, why not, you know, show that energy? And it's, I don't think it's me. I think it's Rahu just transiting in Leo that is making most people around the world um, do creative things, do artistic things. So uh, this movie, if you really, once you watch the movie, you'll be like, yeah, I could have shot this in one day. But if you shoot that in one day, it'll come out like, you know how I do my celebrity videos where I just put the camera here, put the camera there. All right, just do my acting, have fun, talk about astrology. But this has taken me um, around 20 days to film because I wanted each scene to be beautiful for you guys, for you guys to not only understand certain planets like Rahu to their highest of level, but I wanted to give it with the highest of quality. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, my whole week now between today till next Thursday, it's all going to be post-production, sound editing, music editing, composing. So yeah, a lot of work. And this is why I haven't filmed since last Thursday or Wednesday. It's been literally five days now. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just make a video today for you guys and uh, give you guys uh, some unique thing to, you know, digest. So everybody can watch the video instead of just me doing conjunction that may not relate to you. I'm just, hey, I'm here for all of you. So today we are going to be covering a very um, unique concept in Vedic astrology known as Gandhanta point. And Gandhanta point is a point that occurs in a certain padha of certain nakshatras, which I'll explain. And this is by far, I think, the most misunderstood point in astrology of Gandhanta point. A lot of fear mongering is out there. Some true information is out there. But you don't really get to learn about astrologers by reading. You have to look at charts. You have to test people. You know, you have to ask questions to people. That's how you learn. Astrology is not a chapter one, chapter two, finished book and you know astrology. No, astrology is this, this observation. Astrology is observation. Uh, you know, uh, astrology is a um, kind of like uh, interaction between you and other people in the world. Interaction between you and your teachers and gurus. Just having a cup of coffee and some, your guru says something in the middle of a break while teaching astrology. And um, he said something that he'll probably never say again while teaching. And that one little point is something that you always remember and you see it in the chart. So whenever I'm like doing career consultation or Navamsha chart consultation, I'm seeing this now because obviously my software allows me to see all these Gandhanta points and, uh, you know, all the other little mathematical points that, you know, we miss in regular charts. So that's where I ask questions. And after years of, you know, um, asking questions and looking at things, observing things, seeing what the actual meaning of this Gandanta point is, it really showed its true nature, which has been written out there, which has been spoken out there. 
but I wanted to share that with you. So obviously, Gandanta point doesn't just occur with moon. You know, many people think that if your moon is in a certain nakshatra, certain padha, your moon is in Gandanta position. But guess what? It's not just moon. Your Rahu could be in Gandanta. Your sun could be in Gandanta. Your Saturn could be in Gandanta point. And each planet will bring its own quality towards experiencing this, um, uh, what do you call, uh, this spark. So if you do not know which nakshatra or padha your planets are in, and which, uh, you know, if you have Gandanta points or not, for that, check out the links here and check out my full astrological report, where especially on the second page in the bottom, you will see each planet each nakshatra, each padha, including all my books, astrology, conjunction, and aspects at the speed of light, and all my consultations at this link here. So, let's get started with our Gandanta video. So, the first Gandanta point occurs in the first padha of Ashwani, Magha, and Mula nakshatra. So, the first padha, which is literally around 3 degrees and 20 minutes, all of these nakshatra, so any planet that is situated in these nakshatra, in the first padha, and especially closest to that one degree point, is known as the Gandhanta position of a planet. Then, the last padha of Revti, Ashlesha, and Jeshta nakshatra. So the fourth padha, because each nakshatra has four padhas. Padha 1, Padha 2, Padha 3, Padha 4. So fourth padha of Revti, Ashlesha, and Jeshta nakshatra creates a Gandanta point. What is Gandanta? Gandanta meaning tying a knot. There's this knot, there's this a tangle point that the individual will have to untangle in this life. That is a Gandanta point. So this is the transition from a fiery sign to air sign, or I mean fiery sign to water sign. Fire is dissolving in water. So what happens when fire, when you put fire, take a hot coal, put it in the water, what will happen? Steam comes out. It becomes this point of uh, ending something because Fire and water, they're both now evaporating. If you take a little cup of water, you know, cold water, put a hot coal into it, the steam will come out. The steam is the water going out. So what this shows, it shows a transformation. Something is transforming into something else. Something is changing into something else. Same thing with the water sign going into the fire sign where water is being poured on fire, what's going to happen? Again, steam is going to come out. Transition point. And people who are born with this Gandhanta point, whether it's your moon, it could even be your ascendant at the Gandhanta knot. First of all, this is a very, very unique birth for you. Very unique birth. Especially, you know how many of you ask me for spiritual progress? Can you please tell me if I'm going to have spiritual progress? The only thing if you wanted to know in the entire chart is if you had especially planets like Moon, Ketu, Jupiter, and Venus in Gandanta point. Because Moon is the mind. The mind is being directed towards a certain thing. Okay, Venus, your passion, your love. What is it that you love? What is it that you're passionate about? What is it that you are, uh, uh, what you value, what you enjoy? Is transforming into this Gandanta position. Ketu, the planet of Moksha, Moksha Karagra. Ketu that represents this nothingness, this no zero gravity zone, where you finally understand the essence of the creator of this universe. When that's in the Gandanta point, strongly shows that point, strongly shows that evolution of uh, that spiritual evolution. Jupiter, our dharma, 
Jupiter is a dharma karak planet. Dharma meaning your true path. What is your ultimate true path? The true path that you're here to take, that you're here to experience. And Jupiter is the karak of spirituality, karaka of higher knowledge, gurus, teachers, astrologers, counselors, advisors, and guru as you know, as per how Sunil came and you know, told us that even God, you can deny God and God will forgive you. If you deny your guru, God can even, even forgive you for that. So this is a very important planet. So when guru or Jupiter is in the Gandanta point, Shows that your knowledge, the divine knowledge that you have brought here on this planet is towards its transformation, is towards either receiving that transformation guide or you yourself are going to be guiding others towards this transformation point. And especially if when this occurs in that Jeshta and Mula Nakshatra, Kandanta point, this is the most important point that I have noticed in charts of psychics. Terror readers, people who are fascinated with this um, world of paranormal, world of the astral plane. Also, the Gandanta point occurring in Pisces is another one where I've seen a person who always somehow is attracted towards going into a spiritual life. And this occurred when a certain individual was going through the Mahadasha of a planet that was in a Gandanta point. Mahadasha, if you do not know, don't worry about it. I've written, made enough videos on it. I'm writing a book on Mahadasha's, how to you know, study Mahadasha in the most simplest form. And whenever these planets activate, what it does, it brings you to this knot, okay? It brings you to this knot and tells you that this, there's an issue here that you need to untangle. And what happens is when a person tries to untangle that knot, what is doing, the knot can be untangled fine, but it's actually untangling your own karma. The, you know, it's like uh, the clogged drain of your plumbing system of your karma. You're untying that, that drain. You're, you're, you're taking that, 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 that gunk all the hair and the gunk out so the water can flow. So your karma can really flow towards the energy that it wants to. So, but what happens is, is that depending upon which planet you're receiving what dignity, okay? Because there are certain planets do very well in Scorpio, certain planets they may not do well in Scorpio, like in the Mula Nakshatra. Even moon in the sign of Scorpio, you know, or like in the Jeshta point, can do very well, especially if it has positive aspects on itself. But what this shows that when you're untangling it, you're going to go through this heavy transformation. And that heaviness of the transformation, people feel like, oh, it's the most negative thing. Because if you look at certain spiritual people, there are certain spiritual people from birth that just know that I am to follow a certain sattvic dharmic path. Kind of like Yogananda. Okay, Sri Yukteswar. Then there are people who go through such a point where they're like, whatever that I have achieved and I've gained in my life does not give me satisfaction at all. And what they do, they either throw that behind or the karmic energy itself makes them throw that behind so they can follow this path of silence towards the spiritual progress. And when this occur in that uh, Ashlesha Nakshatra point, this Gandanta point, it shows that a person is here to experience everything about the material world so they can see how it's making them tie into this knot. See, the, in this Nakshatra, a person can experience all the material things. And the more you experience that material joy, having that nice house, that nice car, all the wealth in the world, all the nice foods, you will feel more tangled within yourself. And you'll be like, why is it that whatever I have achieved, that I'm trying to achieve, I'm not enjoying? So you see how that plays out. 
And here a person will be like, you know what? No, this is not helping me. I am a Wall Street guy making all this money, yet I am feeling more and more trapped and tangled in my world. And I cannot get out of it. So what happens then the transformation comes. Whether through Mahadashas, whether through if major planets are transiting over your Gandanta planet, Gandanta point, they will bring that transformation. They will suddenly will make you experience something where you realize the truth. And this is with all three Gandanta points. You will realize the truth and you will realize this is not my cup of tea. I need to go through that true path that doesn't require anything. I have the, the biggest and the most wealth in my life by just wearing the simple clothes and just walking in my path. And the more I learn about that spiritual progress, the more I learn about the sacred you know, um, sonnets and poems, the more rich I feel. So this is why you see like, um, I was fascinated by this one documentary on the life of a Hare Krishna devotee. How a person uh, was a uh, IT professional, this young, young fellow. I mean, if I was to do his horoscope or just look at him, I'm like, hey, so you must be going towards your material goal. You're probably trying to look for a promotion. You're probably trying to look for, you know, um, all these big things, but no, this young man left his IT world. He said, I just want to be in Hare, under Hare Krishna. I'm all about Hare Krishna. I just want to be in a room studying books on Krishna. And I want to learn everything that the, he knows. Everything that Krishna knows, I want to know. That is what Gantanta point does. Because it brings certain transformation within you. And whether you go through that negative transformation positive transformation, but it's a transformation that really is trying to show you who you truly are. And these are the people with the Gandanta point who revolutionize the world in terms of spiritual growth. Like I wish I had it. Like I would truly be interested in leaving everything behind and wanting to pursue um, a more spiritual path and a path of that true wisdom. Who knows? I may have other combination, other things happening that may take me to that one day. But the Gandanta point is a point where a planet becomes extremely powerful to bring a change, not only into themselves, but into the world. So especially, and one thing that I noticed, and all of you who in the past four years have emailed me, you know, and said, you know what, couple, um, I want to do something big. I want to make some sort of a change. And I would literally say six out of 10 people had a certain planet in a Gandanta point. And either a major planet was transiting over it, like Jupiter, Saturn, or they were going through the Mahadasha of a planet that was in a Gandanta point. And they're like, I have to make a change. I want to make a change. But they don't realize that the change that they want to make, it has to be towards this spiritual progress. Meaning you have to show the world the true essence of human beings. The true essence of this divine creature that is here. Fighting over religion, fighting over rules and, and money and, and you know, uh, uh, control and power. You are here to put that brick of new evolution on. So very, very important. And especially now that we are in this process of ascension of ourselves. And that's another thing that I need to make. I actually have to make a video on why I moved 3,000 miles away from the flashy, bright California, Hollywood, movies. Why I suddenly make the decision. Everybody is kind of like still confused. Why I suddenly, within one month, bought a house and just moved. There's a whole scenario and a story to it, which I'll make a separate video on it. But we're in a time, we're in a very, very different time where this new technology, this new age technology and science is trying to coexist with the ultimate true essence that has existed for eons, which is the spiritual progress and the spiritual energy that we all 
come here with is just that it's finally awakening. So if it was down here, technology, science, sex, drugs, power is here. What's happening now with this ascension, it's now balancing out. And then they're going to come together and they're going to mash. And remember, we're no longer in Kali Yuga. We are in the Gandanta point. This is perfect. I can't believe I just made this video and not even realized that uh, this point that I knew this whole all along. We're in a Gandanta point from Kali Yuga to Drap Yuga. Research on it. You'll know. Kali Yuga is not 450,000 years as you have read on countless websites. Because you know what happens is one website copies from the other, copies from the other, copies from the other, copies from the other, from the other because that's all they know. Where I finally realized this four years ago, no. The knowledge, you have to really ask a guru. You really have to go and research more that I never did in my high school studies and or my college studies. Now I do it because I'm more older, I'm more mature. I really need to know the real thing so I can share the real thing with you. Okay? So this is what Gandanta point is. So I hope you realize this and I hope you don't, don't feel all this fear about, oh my God, my child has a Gandanta point. Well, of course, he's going to revolutionize something. They're here to change something in this world. You should be proud. You should be glad that they have Gandanta point. Hopefully all their planets are in Gandanta point so they can really make a transformation not only in themselves but in this world for the better. Because remember, there's now in Drap Yuk transition of this Gandanta point, it's always going to be up, 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 up through what's up, uh, uh, what do you guys, Satyug. Okay? So guys, this was my little uh, analysis on Gandanta point. If you're new to my channel, subscribe below. Again, if you want to know where your Gandanta points are, if your planets are in those degrees that I told you for that, check out the links here. Check out my full astrological report, books, and consultations. Otherwise, we'll see you in a couple of days. And then on Friday, interview with Rahu. The movie comes out. Yes. Get your tickets and popcorns ready. Bye-bye.